So we spoke a couple of weeks ago about the importance and the excitement of this summer of the Pro-Am. You've got the crossover, you've got Drew League, you've got Peach Jam. I know that's high school, but it doesn't matter. You've got a bunch of these popping up all over the country. And it brings together all these elite NBA players, and it gives local communities a chance to see these players up close and personal when they probably would never see them in an NBA game. And if they did, they'd be in the nosebleed because of how expensive these tickets cost. Which is why this news sucks so bad. Chet Holmgren. Looks like he might have some ligament damage to his foot. In the first quarter of the crossover game in Seattle with a bevy of NBA stars, including LeBron, Jason Tatum, DeJounte Murray, Paolo Bancaro, and Chet Holmgren, Braun took an outlet pass, came barreling down the court, as he does, like a train, and Chet Holmgren stood in his way, good for Chet, by the way, just getting in the way of LeBron James, 19 years old, as big as a stick, literally like a twig going up against a freight train. Anyway, he decides to put his body between LeBron and the basket. He made a nice little defensive play, made LeBron James miss, and then landed awkwardly on his ankle, and poof, night over. Didn't look like it was too bad. Turns out, though, news comes out today, and the reports are that he has, quote, potential torn ligaments in his foot, The timetable is now being developed to further evaluate the injury. That is terrible. Terrible for Chet. Worse for the Pro-Ams. Pro-Ams are now under attack. People are coming out of the woodworks being like, yes, we should never let these guys play in these unsanctioned tournaments of the games that they already play for a living. So the same game had issues from the beginning with humidity. Possibly from so many people jamming the inside of the gym. Had to be stopped multiple times because the court was too slippery. Play was ultimately suspended in the second quarter. They basically canceled it because of, quote, unsafe conditions stemming from the condensation on the floorboards. What a janky-ass Seattle gym. Like, this is why we hate Seattle. I don't really, but as a Portland person, you just hate everything about them. And my worst fears, like I said, already being realized. The tweet from Charles Robinson, senior reporter from Yahoo Sports. The warning shot. Quote, after this Chet Holmgren injury diagnosis, hashtag NBA teams. He's hashtagging the NBA? Charles. Charles. Let's start again. After this Chet Holmgren injury diagnosis, hashtag NBA teams would be insane to let any player screw around and participating in the program. I don't understand how this wasn't already a given. Charles, these grown men make their own decisions in the summer. So I don't know if you can necessarily try to say this should have already be sanctioned. The Drew League's been going on since the 1970s. Folks, like this has been, you're just now aware of the Pro-Ams. Like I said, the Pro-Ams are incredible. They make superstars from Kevin Durant to LeBron to DeRozan accessible to communities, mostly inner city communities, that simply cannot afford and will not ever pay to see them in person. And if they do, it's an event. This was what I thought was the beginning of something really special, which is the summer of the Pro-Am, where maybe in the off-season we'll have people go around like the Harlem Globetrotters from city to city playing in elite Pro-Ams and seeing guys for $5, right? Get your Gatorade, you go and sit in an undersized, over-sweaty gym, and you watch LeBron James give Chet Holmgren buckets. And now people think that we should be banning players from playing in them due to injury risk. This is the player empowerment era. This is not something that I think is going to go anywhere, but I think it's something at least to note. If DeMar DeRozan wants to play in the Drew League, he's playing in the Drew League. He's played every single year during his career. He's going to play unless he is contractually forbidden to do it. And that would also then mean, okay, well, what about all these little lifetime fitness pickup games that we see with pure sweat and... You know, Drew Hanlon and all these things that we see on Instagram where it's like, oh, Carmelo and his hoodie was given so-and-so the business. Like, then that couldn't happen either, right? Those games also not able because they are also have the same height, heightened amount 
of injury risk. Every scrimmage would be off. Every single one. Don't think it would be very easy to enforce, truthfully. This would be like the Prohibition era where there was like speakeasies. They're like pro-am speakeasies. Like, hey, LeBron's coming through tomorrow at the YMCA in Columbus, Ohio. Like, be there or be square. Like, you have to have the password to get in. There's no phones allowed. It's like Dave Chappelle show where you put him in a little, like, envelope and it locks shut to, to avoid that. And then it's like, oh, DeJounte Murray tore his MCL. How do you do that? Uh, walk into the store. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so I think that's probably impossible to litigate. But it is going to put the pro-am under a microscope. And I think any time we get to a point where players at some point are going to make 80 90 maybe $100 million a year, NBA teams are going to find a way or are going to try to find a way to preserve their golden goose, to put it in a little glass case until they can bring it out and show their friends. You can't play in any pro-ams. You can only play for me. Hopefully Chet will be fine. Nothing's going to come of this. But the fact that that's where the journalists' minds immediately went, it's troubling. Charles Robinson, allow the fun to go down. Programs are lit. We need more of them, not more scrutiny.